Hi, right. lad. A little bit of oil to a pan. Is that olive oil? I think that was olive oil. That was olive oil. But Jamie was like, let's just put oil. Like Jamie's all scared now. You're not supposed to be using olive oil in, in Asian cookery in general. Are there even fucking olives in Asia? I could be wrong. Chef Brian Sao here, not your typical chef. And today I'm gonna be reacting to Uncle Roger hate. <laughs> Oh boy, it's one of those episodes. Uncle Roger hate Jamie Oliver butter chicken. Before I go on with today's episode, I do want to shout out my latest sous chef level patrons, Dean S. Monahan, Justin Valcourt. Thank you so much for your support. It really does mean so much to me. And for those of you who have been following the channel, please consider becoming a patron. Link in the description below. There, it'll take you to my official Patreon page where if you sign up, you can take advantage of some awesome perks. Also, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Chef Brian Sal. That is the platform I am definitely most active on and I'd love to hear from you. And with all that out of the way, let's react to some shit. Jamie Oliver is back and this time he making butter chicken. Man, this video just started and wasn't really liking what I saw with that butter chicken seven seconds into the video. This guy destroyed fried rice, destroyed ramen, mm. destroyed Thai green curry. Yes. Is he now gonna make all Indian meats and nephew cry? I've come up with a recipe that you could do any day of the week. This is... Okay, that doesn't actually look half bad. Let's keep watching. My kind of version of a butter chicken. All right, my kind of butter chicken. So maybe this, I, I'm not sure. Was this video uh, filmed by Jamie after all the shit that um, Uncle Roger gave him? And now Jamie's like treading the, you know, this territory more lightly. This is my version. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. He's identifying from the beginning, hey, this is my version of butter chicken. All right, and we all know, you know, Jamie's, thing is being healthier, right? Healthier. So let's see how it goes. Okay, Uncle Roger, go easy on him. Won't be super strict on all the spices because I know he won't use most of the spice anyway. This is Uncle Roger on easy mode. I'm just going to make sure you're basic correct. <laughs> all of this right. happens in a pan, so it's a super convenient recipe. Let's get that on a high heat, okay. and then I'm going to add 700 grams of fresh tomatoes whole. Essentially, what I want to do okay. is scald, char, and blacken the skins of these tomatoes. Butter chicken is North Indian dish that uses makani gravy, which is tomato-based gravy. So yes. tomato correct, but yep. just make tomato puree. No need to char it. In all fairness, like all the recipes I've come across, and you know my very little experience with Indian cuisine, typically you're using canned tomatoes. You can absolutely use fresh tomatoes like Jamie is here I think he's trying to push the whole thing about using uh, fresh ingredients you know healthier ingredients using canned and or fresh tomatoes I don't think is nutritionally gonna be a huge variance correct me if I'm wrong however uh, roasting it I'm you know I'm not sure if that's I don't think that's very traditional but if he's gonna use roasting to I mean roasting will concentrate the flavors more maybe he wants to peel the skins prior you know to and make his own puree. I'm not sure, let's keep watching. Um, it's a little too soon to say. As we blacken these, we're gonna do the chilies. Split the chilies in half, and with the tip of the knife, take out the seeds. That's the hottest uh, yeah. bit. Just keep seed in there. Little spice won't kill you, Jamie. Big man like you can't handle small seed. So in these go. <laughs> now, I agree with that. I think you could have kept the seeds in there. Uh, no need to remove them every single time. Personal preference on my part. As these tomatoes get black all over, what you'll notice is naturally the skins are starting to peel off. <laughs> what, what, what are you doing? <laughs> I okay. <laughs> I wasn't the I wasn't the only one that caught that. Um, I chuckled a little because I I saw uh, Jamie put air into the bowl. <laughs> the tomato dropped already, oh, but uh, it's still it was a tiny piece of skin. Okay. Tend to put on plate. Let's get the last of the chilies on there. Now let them cool down. If you want, you can cover them just to let them steam a little mm -hmm. bit. So. It appears Jamie is roasting and then he's going to, uh, you know, cover, which he did cover it. That's going to trap some of the moisture and then it's going to be much easier to peel. And I'm assuming that's the direction he's going in. Although I don't think that's necessary. I don't know because you're making this gravy for the butter chicken. And uh, the method I would go about is just blend it and then strain it versus having to go over each individual tomato. If he was just going to puree this, then I wouldn't 
cover it. So I'm not sure where he's going with this, but let's keep watching. Marinate. Good. Nice You're making marinade. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of the garam masala. Then correct. Garam okay. masala, correct. Cloves of garlic. And just garlic, good. Grater. Garlic, all right. Look at that. Nice. Then. Uh, grating it on a microplane, getting it super fine. I believe he's marinating the chicken. He said marinate, so uh, garam, uh, garam masala, onion, ginger, and then yogurt, I think, is typically what it is. want a nice watching. big couple of thumb-sized pieces of ginger. Just take a little... Ginger, spoon. correct? Just scrape the skin off the ginger. Yep. Then I use the same fine way. grater That's my to favorite grate way to... Uh, using a spoon is my favorite way of peeling the ginger. It's the safest and it's also very easy. The ginger skin comes off uh, super sim uh, super easy with a spoon. Ginger. We will season it with salt. Oh. oh, Jamie's using salt. I think this is the first time I've seen him put salt in in any of the videos we've reacted to. Pepper, okay. Of lovely yogurt. Okay. Yogurt, correct. Oh. Come to the chicken breast. It's all Hi, chicken uh, <laughs> Jamie. Chicken breast. The marinade, mm. all ingredient, correct. Uncle Roger pleasantly surprised. Mm. And then you fuck it up by using chicken breast. I agree. I think uh, chicken thighs and legs are the you know way to go about it. If I'm not mistaken, uh, isn't like the the myth about butter chicken was um, like created to use up uh, old uh, uh, t a ten tandoori chicken is yeah I think that's what it what it is um, which is you know that same marinade with uh, you know the the chili powder and the ginger garlic and yogurt and stuff like that I could be wrong about that let me know in the comments but I if I was making this I definitely would have gone dark meat instead of white meat for the chicken for butter chicken you want to use leg of chicken chicken breast I think it's gonna overcook gonna be too dry but to be fair we one minute twenty two second into <laughs> Weijo of all the Jamie Oliver we joke. This the longest he go before he fucked up. <laughs> the thickness here at this fat end, then this part start to score it. About mm. half a centimeter to a centimeter now thick. Okay. This will allow that lovely marinade to penetrate quicker. Score okay. You can chop to pieces also. Yeah, actually, I would agree with that. I think cutting into cubes or into just chunks, basically cutting it up. And by cutting it up, he did score it, and that does increase surface area. And he said, you know, so more marinade penetrates. But if you just literally cut it into cubes or strips, ideally cubes, again, you're increasing the surface area, and then there's literally more surface area for the marinade to penetrate. So I wouldn't have left the, the breasts whole like that. Even though he scored it, yes, scoring it will help the marinade. But I think for this dish, it's always served with all the pieces cut up. So. There's no polite way to marinade. Get that into all the little slits. And the oh, I just realized uh, there's no chili powder in there, which I think there's supposed to be some chili powder for the for the marinated chicken. Cuts. I'm going to let that marinade for about 10 minutes. What? What, what he say? I'm going to let that marinate for about 10 minutes. <laughs> Uncle Roger is going to have a seizure, but considering the context of what Jamie's doing, and many of you people are not <laughs> big fans of Jamie, but again, I think Jamie is trying to demonstrate quick, healthy recipes. And, you know, the quick part being he's only marinating for 10 minutes, which I just don't think is enough time. It should be overnight. The yogurt in that recipe is key to the texture, to tenderizing the chicken for butter chicken or tandoori ch tandoori style chicken in general. And it's not gonna happen in 10 minutes. Uh, there's just this very distinct softness to chicken that's been marinated with yogurt. He's not getting the advantage of that by marinating for only 10 minutes. Anyway, let's keep watching. Butter chicken, we marinate overnight mm -hmm. at least 12 hour. 10 minutes, that's not called marinade. That's just a splash. 10, 10 minutes, the, the chicken's still alive, it's still clucking. Some people have <laughs> premature ejaculation, but Jamie have premature marination. Oh God. Sorry, children. I'll right. add a little bit of oil to a pan. Is that olive oil? I think that was olive oil. That was olive oil, but Jamie was like, let's just put oil. Like Jamie's all scared now. You're not supposed to be using olive oil in, in Asian cookery in general. Are there even fucking olives in Asia? I could be wrong, okay? I could be wrong. I've always stated I can be wrong, but I don't think uh, uh, olives are readily found in, in Asia. Uh, thus, I don't think olive oil is the oil to go to. Generally, you should be using something neutral like canola oil or um, vegetable oil. Not to say that olive oil isn't healthier for you generally cold pressed oils something like an olive oil which is pressed from olives cold to extract the oil those are much better for you much more natural oils but always have a lower smoke point as opposed to something that's 
process using heat and manipulation to extract oil from, like vegetable oils, canola oils, and things like that. But in the context of making an authentic butter chicken or Asian cuisine in general, there ain't no olive oil in there, all right? Mm. Straight into that hot oil. Usually for butter chicken, you want to use a mm -hmm. tanto, mm -hmm. or if you're cooking at home, you grill. Not shallow fire like this, hiya. I definitely agree with the tandoor part. Traditionally, it's supposed to be cooked in a tandoor. That's, you know, the oven cooking vessel choice of Indian cuisine. And it's it gives a very distinct flavor. I've worked with a tandoor like once or twice in my entire career. They're a lot of fun. I always loved making naan. You get a wonderful charm from a tandoor. Uncle Roger, spot on. You can kind of replicate that, you, doing it on a grill to get some of that char. You could also do it in a broiler. You know, the broiler is where the heat source is from the top and it's very intense. And again, you can get some char. But, you know, Jamie, I think he mentioned early on in the video, uh, you know, they're gonna be doing it in a pot. I think he's, again, for the sake of convenience and time, so he's only marinating for 10 minutes, which I don't agree with. For the sake of simplicity, just having less dishes to cook, he, I, I, I'm pretty sure he's going the one pot method, which is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that's how I cook a lot at home for myself and my family. I try to like reduce the amount of dishes I use to shorten the cleanup time. While it's probably not traditional, I don't hate the fact that uh, uh, Jamie is searing the chicken in a pan. Tando is clay oven. Mm -hmm. You can see it at all the good Indian restaurants. It cooks food full of flavor. Like how Chinese cooking we have wok, hey? Indian oh, cooking okay. have tanto <laughs> hey. <laughs> and I want to get it dark okay. and golden. I agree with Let's that. peel these tomatoes. Just take the skins off. Okay, so he is peeling the tomatoes. Again, I'm not super opposed to the roasting part, you know? If you're peeling, if you want to use peeled tomatoes, you know, typically when you buy like San Marzano tomatoes, you get them peeled, you know? Typically they're blanched, meaning they're like dipped and flashed in hot water and then they're peeled. I don't know how it's done on an in, in, industrial level, like a factory level, but I, you know, typically peeled, you just, dunk it in hot water really fast and the skin comes off really easily. You can do the same thing with roasting, you know, if you want to get some of that roasted flavor, again, you're getting rid of some excess moisture, you're concentrating the flavors. So I don't hate that Jamie did this. Is it traditional? I, I don't think so. Could be wrong. Actually, in fact, no, I'm pretty sure that it's not traditional to roast your tomatoes first. You know, he's going to be, these are small cherry tomatoes or just smaller tomatoes. That's a lot of labor. And if you're trying to make a simplified recipe for home, I would have gone canned. But even then, if you were to go fresh, the way I know how to make butter chicken is you blend it and then you strain it and then you avoid all this labor. The chilies I'll keep to one side. Hey! Bud, do you want to turn the chicken for me, darling? Oh, making your kid work for you for free? Uncle Roger, like, that's the main <laughs> reason. It Oh, sorry. People have kit anyway. Uh, yeah. When I was 13 years old, my dad woke me up on a Saturday and he said, Brian, I came to this country at 13 years old and uh, I started washing dishes at a cafe right away. And today you turned 13, so you're working for me at the gas station, cleaning toilets and stocking shelves. For the rest of my uh, teenage years, I was stuck every weekend, Saturday and Sunday, working for my dad, cleaning up bathrooms, stocking shelves, stacking tires. It was a pretty messy job, but taught me work ethic. And it was also very cheap labor for my dad. <laughs> so look, we've peeled through all of these little tomatoes, and then you can gather all of these little skins at the end, put them in your hand, and in there, that. No, don't, hiya. Is that how you're making tomato puree? Yeah. Just squeezing, okay. don't do that. You're giving your whole family COVID. <laughs> your hands, big boy. <laughs> OK. Um, a lot of things going on here. All right, if I was Jamie and I were, were to ch choose this method for the tomatoes, I definitely would have squeezed the skins to get every bit of tomato juice and puree possible. However, I wouldn't be in that position because I would, again, blend it and then strain it. You avoid all that mess of having to peel. You know, peeling is just really tedious. So yeah, I, I, w I, wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have gone this method. And uh, I guess Jamie is just making his puree from scratch, which is admirable. There's nothing wrong with that. But again, peeling by hand and squeezing, I think was completely unnecessary. You're creating extra mess. You can say by using a blender and straining, you're making more uh, tools dirty, but that's the way I would have gone. Chicken's looking amazing. Mm. Gnarly on both sides and just cooked through perfect. Gnarly on both sides. Gnarly, who <laughs> described good food as gnarly? That how Uncle Roger described Auntie Helen. <laughs> Gnarly. 
exactly. Right, let's get that on the board. Um, okay, so Jamie said that he cooked the chicken all the way. No, no, I guess, you know, if you were to do this on a tent door, the chicken would be cooked all the way. Yeah, no, that's okay. And I, I actually, that's a nice sear. That's a nice solid sear. Totally fine. Yeah, okay. Now, let's make... Again, I would have cut it into smaller chunks rather than leaving it whole. If you're doing this on a tent door, obviously you want the, in a tent door oven on a spit, you definitely want the chunks big enough that you can put it onto the spit. But if I was doing this in as a one pot meal, then I would have um, cut it into smaller bite sized pieces and or like long strips. Uh, but uh, in, in this scenario, all right, and let's keep sauce. Watching. It's really, really simple. So use all those pan juices there. No, 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 Jamie, you don't use the pan juices. When you cook meat, if you use leftover meat juices to cook other things, that very European cooking. Yeah. Indian cooking like this, you make the gravy separately. This is not Indian, this is French. Very fair, very fair. That is a very uh, Western technique, basically utilizing all the fond, uh, all those, you know, all those drippings, all the stuff that's stuck to the pan, that's called fond. And generally you'll, you'll use some kind of acid uh, like wine uh, or vinegar to help break it off. And that's all concentrated flavor. Granted, if you know, that it's not burnt, but even if it's really dark and it looks burnt, generally, as long as it's not singed, there's still a lot of really good flavor. Now, if you really think about it, you know, uh, Uncle Roger, in, you know, is right in the scenario that generally the chicken in uh, in a Indian restaurant uh, would be cooked in a tandoor or on a grill, right? So you're not doing a one pot thing. So there is no fond to cook off from. Now, again, if I was doing this at home and I was uh, make doing it in one pot, I would actually go this route of utilizing the fond, maybe putting some stock in there or something, you know, again, so that I don't have to clean up two pots. Yeah the tomatoes and all the juices okay. into the pan. And now in with two tablespoons of that cashew butter. Cashew butter? Cashew butter. What is cashew butter? All butter right. chicken, uh, we just I use mean... cashew nut paste. Yeah. Cashew butter sound like some organic grocery store whole food <laughs> bullshit. I don't hate that Jamie's using the tomato puree, the, the roasted tomato, peeled roasted tomatoes to deglaze his pan to remove that fond. I would have gone stock or water first, lifted some of that stuff off the pan, let it come up to temp again, and then put in my tomatoes the cashew butter looks like just basically like peanut butter which i don't agree with maybe for convenience sake for people who you know don't have no that's not you can get fresh nuts almost everywhere also it's too early to be putting in this um cashew butter so it should be whole cashews cooked in this gravy until it's soft and then blended um he's it's kind of rushing through the steps a little, in my opinion. You know, he went through all this trouble of roasting tomatoes and peeling it, but then he's using cashew butter rather than whole cashews. Uh, all right. Down pretty quickly and go ruby red. So I've got 500 mils, give or take, of boiling water. Wait, no, 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 no. Don't add water to your magni gravy. Hiya. You're going to dilute the... Uh, okay, uh, I was about to say I don't actually water's perfectly fine for something like this and he did put in a note if i go but yeah okay clarification water okay but this is too much that is a lot of water you, you can still kind of you can actually no you can still recover from this for a dish like this because this is something where the the gravy need all these ingredients in the gravy really need to be simmered and when you have it in a pot and you leave it open and you leave it overheat the moisture is going to continue to dissipate that's called reducing basically you're reducing the water content and you're concentrating the flavors and this is often a desirable thing because water acts as the conductor of breaking down all this stuff as it's simmering but it'll eventually evaporate and leave behind just the ingredients that you have in there, which is the flavor you want concentrated, right? So it's perfectly fine in this application versus like Jamie's egg fried rice video where he added the water. And remember, I, I called it where I put in the chili jam too early. It was probably burning and that's why he added the water. But it doesn't work in that application because in the fried rice, you wanna maintain these granules of rice. And by adding water, you're just, you know, you're just, oversaturating it with moisture and as you work the rice it's going to fall apart and become mushy in this case like the mushiness is a desirable trait 
So water's totally fine. I do agree, this is way too much water. This is where Jamie go wrong. He tried to make butter chicken for whole family, but he didn't use enough tomato. So he used- Speaking of which, there's yet to be any butter in this. And uh, the way I would go about making the butter chicken, and you know what? Uh, he No, he did put in garlic paste, right? In the chicken? I don't think he put anything in the gravy yet. Because the way I would have gone about this is onions, garlic, garlic paste, ginger paste, and saute that in butter, and then put in the tomatoes. So I feel like he's missing a big part of the, the flavor base of a butter chicken. Uh, remember what I said, water is the enemy of flavor, but it does it's not the enemy of cooking, okay? So it's perfectly fine to use water in cooking. Uh, it will dilute the flavor. You just have to know what to do with it and how to handle it to have that ingredient work to your advantage. Just get a fork and just squash all those tomatoes and let that boil vigorously for a couple of minutes. I am gonna put some chili in. The question is... Okay, again, uh, I don't think the, eh, give or take, you don't have to squash the tomatoes in this case because again, for me, I would have just let it cook and then blended the shit out of it. But, uh, oh, now he's gonna chop the chilies. I think what I'm gonna do is just go... So little. If you wanna take the edge off the spice. Wait, what, what are you putting... Don't tell me that's chili jam. He put chili jam in. Jamie, what is with you in this chili jam? Of mango chutney. What, oh, what, mango man, chutney. Man. <sighs> Still, I mean, uh, uh, butter chicken has some sugar in it, so, and chutney has plenty of sugar, so I guess he's trying to use something healthier, but mango chutney isn't necessarily healthier than straight up sugar. And also, last I recall, there is no mango in, in butter chicken. So, no. No, Jamie. Bad Jamie. Bad Jamie. Mango? What? <laughs> Put like two teaspoons of mango chutney. Two teaspoons of mango chutney. Ma mango chut... <laughs> he putting mango chutney into pan? This all over now? You make Uncle Roger put leg down from chair? This is all over now. Dude, what, what is with this guy and his jams and his chutneys and stuff, dude? All honesty, I don't think this is a terrible, like, unforgivable move. Oh, gosh, I can feel the internet's eyes beaming down on me right now. Listen, sugar was is definitely the way to go. I can kind of see where he's going with this, but no. Just ultimately, no. It's, it's, it's... All right. You did say in the beginning of the video, this is Jamie's style. This is his version of it, but uh, it's pretty shit. Mango chutney is condiment. It's condiment. Mm. You don't cook yeah. it that like cooking ketchup. Hi. Ah, yeah. uh, in all fairness, like there are some like Hong Kong dishes, basically spaghetti dishes that use ketchup in the sauce. True fact. I've seen ketchup used in several things that have been cooked. So it's not out of this world to use a condiment as a bait, you know, as an ingredient for something else. But I agree. He should have just used straight up sugar rather than chutney. What you can do is get that chicken in there and we want the chicken to be really juicy, right? And I want quite big chunks. I don't want like little wafy. This is like a theme throughout all of his videos is I don't think he really does the research or really puts thought into simplifying the process or making it more efficient. You know, he's, he's like, you know, kind of throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks. Uh, remember I mentioned, mentioned earlier, I would have cut it into cube sized chunks and or strips. That's what he's ending up doing. If he did that from the beginning, seared it in the pan like that in strips, the size that he's cutting now, he wouldn't have to dirty up his cutting board by chopping it again. He could have just held it on the side and then throw it back in. It was already cut, it was already seared. There's no need. And then, and if he had cut it into strips like that before marinating, then more marinade would have penetrated and his whole 10 minutes, only 10 minutes of marination, you know, would have been improved because he increased the surface area of the chicken to take on more marinade, even though no matter what, I don't think 10 minutes is enough, but this is kind of like double work to me, in my opinion. And then I'm gonna put this in the sauce. No, you want bite-sized mm. pieces for butter chicken. If this is bite-sized, who are you feeding this to? I don't necessarily agree it has to be bite size. I think strips like that are perfectly fine. However, for Jamie's sauce, butter chicken, the, the gravy's supposed to be really smooth. So before the chicken went in, 
It should have been put into a blender and pureed really finely. Supposedly, Jamie's trying to make these recipes for the home cook, make it easier on them. And he does, maybe they the home cook doesn't have a blender or whatever, but you're adding these extra steps of peeling the tomatoes by hand and you know cutting the chicken again rather than cutting it into strips from the beginning. So again, I just don't think it was thought through. That's just my professional opinion. What I'm gonna do now is just spoon. No, no, wrong again. The last step here yogurt? should be butter. You making butter? Is that chicken? cream or butter? Uh, and I agree. I mean, um, well, you know, butter is made from cream, right? However, they're still two completely different ingredients. I'm not sure if that was yogurt Jamie was putting in there or heavy cream. It looked like yogurt, but I think it was heavy cream because Uncle Roger's talking about butter in there. I didn't hear it, but we'll keep watching. I do agree though, butter should be going in at this point. Where your butter, Jamie? Where your butter? <laughs> it is called butter chicken. <laughs> Through the sauce, just a little bit of coriander on the top. And that, my friends, is gonna be a beautiful curry. Uh, and he put the cilantro now while it's still simmering and the heavy cream is not incorporated in. Interesting. All right, he's got rice. Rice here. I put so what is chickpeas in. Chickpea, hi, that not in. Chickpea Middle Eastern, James. <laughs> Uncle Roger, phone drop. I don't even care anymore. I have no comment on the chickpea part. I feel like I've seen plenty of chickpea, or not plenty, but I've seen chickpea pea in Indian cuisine before. Um, let me know in the comments. I'm going to be completely Look honest at that. with you. Big chunks of meat. This is not a disaster like some of his other videos that I've reacted to. Not at all, okay? I know that's not gonna be half bad. Could it have been better? Absolutely. What am I gonna grade this out of 10? I'll give it a six, you know? I'll give it a six, more, you know, more than a five. <laughs> I don't think that'll taste terrible by any means. Is it super authentic? No, he identified from the beginning of the video that it's not. Could there have been things he could have done to make it better? Yes. This dish wasn't as big of a train wreck as some of his previous ones. Overall, Okay, definitely some poor choices. Again, some things I think could have been improved upon. Six out of 10. Uh, let me know what you thought. What would you have graded it out of 10? Hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. Please let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to react to next because a shit ton of you <laughs> asked for this one. And you guys letting me know in the comments def definitely helps me choose the next video. With that said, I am Chef Brian Sow, not your typical chef, and I'll see you really soon.